Okay, I just wanted to provide some basic information to get you started this week on writing your first essay. So this presentation is just about basic organization and the common errors that I see in freshman English. So first of all, consider your structure of any essay. You will have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Sometimes on the, or not sometimes, but for every essay, you're going to need to provide a general outline for each of the, um, on the discussion board for each essay. And so when I say that, I'm just wanting the basics. You don't even have to explain the introduction as long as you explain your thesis statement and then show what your points are going to be. Remember that you're going to have as many main points as necessary to support your thesis. A common practice is three, one, three, one essay or the five paragraph essay, but this is college college English and you do not have to do that anymore. You can have two points, you can have four, five, however many is necessary. So whenever I ask for a general outline, this is basically what I'm looking for, single sentences or bullets for each of these um, points. So the introduction needs to engage the reader and you can do that in a variety of ways. You can ask a rhetorical question, you can maybe provide a definition, maybe some sort of anecdote. Um, please see pages 15 through 16 in a writer's reference for further ideas about their introduction. For this class, I would like to see the thesis statement appear in the introduction. Now, just let's be clear, thesis statements do not have to appear in, in the introduction. Sometimes um, students wait till the conclusion, or sometimes it may appear in the middle. Um, it is best and easiest to put the thesis statement in the introduction. You can see pages 9 through 12 in a writer's reference for help with thesis statements. Then after your introduction paragraph, you're going to move on to body paragraphs. Each body paragraph should cover one main idea, okay? And so I want you to think about it this way. You need to have a main point and you need to provide a combination of information and explanation. Think of it as a piece of pie. Now this is really simplified, but I'm just trying to give you a visual of how you can imagine what needs to be in each body paragraph. You have your point, which would be your topic sentence, then you have information, and then explanation. So think about the point. This will be your topic sentence. Topic sentences should be transitional, and this is the main idea of each paragraph. Each paragraph should only cover one main idea. Do not jump around or bounce around between ideas, and make sure you thoroughly cover the idea. You can provide different types of information. If you are analyzing a text, you, this is where you'll pull in quotes or information from that text. And then you will provide your explanation about why you are including this point and why you're including this information. Finally, the conclusion should just wrap up the paper. You can provide final thoughts, reflect on the thesis, summarize key points and you can see page 20 in a writer's reference for that information. So moving on to some common errors in freshman English, the first most common error is using the word Y-O-U in, in your writing. This is not proper for academic writing and this is really hard because we speak this way. So for instance, don't use you just never know when you're going to need a first aid kit. Again, we talk this way all the time. This is second person point of view and we're not writing any essays this semester that include second person. Those would be directions or, or recipes or, or things like that. We need to stick with first or third person for this um, class. So instead, you would have to revise it to read, a person never knows when he or she will need a first aid kit. This is going to get a little messy because if you're using a singular noun, then you will need the singular um, both gender pronouns. Speaking of which, um, the most common pronoun issue it, um, depends on the fact that we have indefinite pronouns and indefinite pronouns are always singular. You can look at these um, in G1E and G3A in a writer's reference 
because these indefinite pronouns affect both the subject verb agreement and the pronoun antecedent agreement. Um, we don't speak this way, so sometimes it's difficult to catch and correct. Don't say this. Everybody in the class thought they deserved an A. This sounds correct because everybody seems like a whole bunch of people, so they would be the proper uh, connection, but that is not the case. Everybody is singular, and so we have to consider the singular he, she. Another common error is fragments. You need to make sure you always have a subject for in verb to, to make it a sentence. CG5, please. Don't. The young boy had too much energy to sit still through the opera through no fault of his own. Through no fault of his own is a fragment. It is not a complete sentence. You can revise it this way. Through no fault of his own, the young boy had too much energy to sit still through the opera. Sometimes writers will use fragments for emphasis. You're going to see this when you read um, in the brief Bedford Reader. Um, there may be times that you want to include a fragment for emphasis. I'll accept the occasional fragment for emphasis, but only when it is an obvious conscious choice to do so. I have to know that you're doing this on purpose, and I'll be able to tell by the way you write. Um, the opposite of fragments is run-ons, and this is when we try to put too many sentences together without proper punctuation. You can see section G6 for more information on this. Um, we either need to separate sentences or join them properly. The air freshener was too strong, it made me sick. The air freshener was too strong, it made me sick. The air freshener was too strong, it made me sick. The air freshener was too strong, so it made me sick. So you see here, we have a combination. We have um, separated with the use of the semicolon. We have uh, made them two completely different sentences with the use of the period. Or you can go ahead and add a co coordinating conjunction and a comma to, to combine these two sentences. Speaking of commas, this is the most common error I see every semester in freshman English. Um, you can take a look at P1 and P2 in a writer's reference because that's going to cover all of the rules. P1 shows how to use commas. P2 shows how to not use commas. Um, the, so here are the most common areas that we use commas. First of all, to separate items in a list. And this includes the Oxford comma. Now, what is the Oxford comma? Well, it is that debatable, do I need it or do I not, one that comes after the next to last item in a list. Let me show you why you need it. Johnny left money to his two ex-wives, Philip and Dave. What? Philip and Dave are not his ex-wives. But see, when we do not use the Oxford comma after Philip, it makes us wonder about this, this statement. The proper way to do this would be to say, Johnny left money to his two ex-wives, Philip and Dave. Use a comma after an introductory clause in a sentence. In the event of an emergency, comma, please use the nearest exit. Use one before a coordinating conjunction. I gave the soda to the boy, comma, and he spilled it on the floor. But do not add a comma when there is no subject change. It should say the boy sipped the soda and spilled it on the floor. A lot of times I will have students who try to put a comma in right here behind soda, and that is not necessary. What we have here is a, a compound verb, sipped and spilled, and there are no commas needed. Other punctuation, semicolons. You use them where you would use a period to separate two complete clauses. John spent his money on the bicycle. He had wanted one for years. You could do the same. You could separate it and capitalize he. The, the reason you would use the semicolon is if you're wanting to continue a thought between sentences, if they are really closely connected and you want to hang on to the thought. Another way to use a semicolon is when you are listing multiple items and some of the items in your list also have commas. The job requirements included the ability to use Microsoft Word, Excel, and Publisher, availability for travel, dedication to the company, and excellent customer service skills. As you can see, because we needed commas between Word, Excel, and Publisher, the semicolon was needed to, to show that that was one area, and then we moved on to the availability for travel. When showing dialogue, include the end punctuation within the quotation marks. This also uh, 
I, I didn't put this in here, but when we are using quotation marks within a sentence and we need a comma, the comma goes inside the quotation marks. Punctuation goes inside the quotation marks for the most part. So let's look at this. John screamed, get out of my way. The exclamation point is inside the quotation marks. The only exception to this is when you are quoting a source and this sentence has a period at the end. If you're quoting a source, put the period after the in-text citation. According to the article, crime doesn't pay. This is according to Jones on page 23. However, if there is some other punctuation that is included in the article, you will go ahead and use that punctuation and still put a period after the in-text citation. According to the article, crime doesn't pay, Jones 23. Never, ever, ever will you use a period in both spots. According to the article, crime doesn't pay, period, nope, Jones 23. So this is, this causes some confusion um, every semester in this, in this course and in writing in general. The general rule, unless you're citing sources, is to put the punctuation within the quotation marks. Some final thoughts. Please, please, if you have any questions, let's look at a writer's reference. Sections A, S, P, and G are the most important when it comes to these different writing rules. If you have specific questions, go, go to the index and look up the, the word. Maybe you're looking up thesis statement. Maybe you're looking up comma usage, and you can find the specific pages that these issues are on. After your first essay, you will know more about which areas you need to study. If I'm seeing a problem, I will direct you to a certain section in a writer's reference. Um, hopefully you can learn a lot from this first essay and um, just improve your writing as the semester goes on. Thanks a lot.